All right, welcome back to another Mask of Momentum video. It is Peter here today, and today we're gonna just go over what Team K Fade brought for the World Championship, what me and Majin brought, and what we worked on for a pretty long time going into the World Championship. And spoiler alert, it's pretty obvious that we were playing a wizard going into it. Uh, and we decided upon Icelander instead of Kano. Icelander seemed like the better pick for this tournament specifically, uh, although I did want to play Kano, but uh, Majin uh, convinced me not to play Kano multiple weeks in a row, so good on him. But no, this deck was very, very good, and it, we did not put the results up that uh, this deck deserved, but I felt like this, uh, this deck was quite good. And I think a lot of other people also thought this deck was quite good uh, going into it. And surprisingly, Icelander be became the most represented deck at the World Championship, which was super, super surprising to basically everybody going, like, thinking about meta percentages and all that. That was like a huge surprise basically to everybody. And this is what we brought for our version of Icelander that I thought was very overperformed for me. Uh, usually i'm usually a very i like playing ice center and i think it's a very great deck obviously uh but i'm not too inclined about playing it i think there's a lot of skill expression in icelander uh and kano and i'm a lot better at doing the skill expression in kano and making decisions on kano way more than i am with icelander majin's really the icelander specialist in our group uh but he was just like dude you gotta play it and through our testing we we're just like damn yeah this is just the deck to play and we had some pretty good stuff going into it uh yeah so i came back from worlds but unfortunately uh at worlds i lost my voice and <laughs> so when it came back uh it was basically I, I lost it with like the day i got to worlds and i basically like for like a week i was just like scratchy voice like trying to like just talk through it because i just like couldn't not talk for like an entire day to like make it rest so because we were testing every single day and you know we had to play the world championship so i was basically just like on the last nerve of my voice and then i landed on monday and uh like late at night and then i went to sleep really quickly and then i woke up on tuesday and i could not talk at all it was the faintest uh thing ever so i couldn't record any videos when i immediately got back but i will be recording more and definitely doing some dialogue of the whole entire top eight i'm gonna do every single game of the top eight all four quarterfinals the semis and the finals and to go over a little bit more but to get back to our main topic today is going to be my deck tech for what me and majin brought to the world championship this deck is quite good it's basically based off of a regular icelander deck with some very specific tech choices that we decided was going to be better for this entire thing for a little bit of context uh our icelander deck was performing very well like before uh bright lights came out and we thought icelander was like pretty much a lock for uh going through it and even when bright lights came out we were like pretty fine in like a theory crafting of that tome for Joma is going to make the Icelander matchup even better right so something that Majin always talks about and that I also agree with is that I thought Icelander was quite favored into Joma at least a 65 to 75 percent uh for the Icelander specifically we're just like just winning all these games man like the just all of our data all these things we're just kept winning the Icelander versus Drollway matchup and I thought it was very very good even when I was like pretty inexperienced with playing Icelander specifically uh when I put the AGE Invitational I was still I was beating Drollmys there and I did uh even even though I was not that great of an Icelander player back then uh I've put like close to 500 games of this character in the last couple of months it's been pretty quite insane uh grind for this just to get basically uh, when you test with one of the best ice enders in the world, like Majin, uh, it is hard for me to be like, I can play ice ender in a tournament unless I feel really good. So I put definitely put in the work and Majin was like, damn, it's doing pretty well on ice ender recently. So I was like, I well, let's, let's send it. Our, our matchup into Dromai, which we thought was going to be the most represented deck in this format, was obviously pretty good beforehand and we thought Tome was going to make it better. Um, we quickly, I even played it in the ProQuest season for a top four with like the only CC, uh, one that I had. So I used, 
I centered and it was quite good. I felt pretty good. I got kind of high rolled in the semifinals versus a Rhinar and didn't, uh, d unfortunately didn't get to make it to finals to get there. But here we are at, uh, and it was quite going well until we started testing versus other like prominent Dromite people. Like before, uh, we tested a little bit versus Prodigy and some like different Canadians going like back and forth. And then I, I tested versus some other uh, like known US Dromite players. And we were doing good versus like the US Dromite players, but something that the pro like the Prodigy one happened with us, we were just got literally 03 bodied by Prodigy and it was just like not going well. And that basically made it so we were a little less, um, a little less confident in what we usually do with with Ice Thunder, and we needed something to change. But we were like two days from leaving for Barcelona, right? So it's not like we can do much. So I packed some like random ass cards uh, to do it, and then uh, we got a message from a Canadian player that basically gave us a new deck list. And it was pretty interesting because usually we are like on the nine popper list as Ice Ender versus Dromai. And this one had 15 poppers, which is quite interesting. Um, I did think it was a complete 360 of like how you usually put the matchup, right? Like we weren't playing E Strikes and Yellow, Yellow, Yellow Ether Ice Veins, which are usually really, really good powerhouse cards, right? And through that, we realized that uh, the poppers were fine. But when you, the more and more games that we played against Dromai and how the Dromai is like adjusted uh, and they were just blocking out more, the, the less we could actually close out the game, right? Because we couldn't, like, when you just send an attack and they, they double block and only take one to two, you don't have enough attacks if you're popping and then sending an attack to actually like kill them eventually in the game, especially if they're starting to run like more blues or tome, which pretty much a blue and every sense of it was able to just get the chrome eyes and the mirror guys set you behind and it just wasn't working great right? so we had to go back to the drawing board and we figured found out that specifically red ice bolt was really really good against drone mine because it's basically deal five damage because they don't have enough like resources because they're trying to play a full red line deck with red tome and you're just doing a substantial amount of damage to them uh and something that we also found is that the games that we were winning we were keeping channel lake frigid around for multiple turns so you obviously play it on your opponent's turn get it to channel one and if you can get it to channel two uh, as channel lake frigid you were that was like the path of victory that you could do to basically make that drone by matchup super super like very winnable and i would like get back to that 60 percent 65 percent that we wanted it to be at where it, where it was before but without that uh it doesn't there so we went from like the full attacks to bankaj or ethnic smoke basically coming in was like yo big arcane spells and out and which was a great tech and did very very well uh for us in testing and in the event and uh just an incredible mind uh as well so let's go through my deck list uh pretty much pretty standard for equipment here we have a cornet peak uh tunic iron rock gauntlet storm shatters and then our winning moon and then obviously in the board we have the luvian castellos the node and the hood obviously the 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 metacarpus nodes goes in versus uh anything that also has random rk barrier or stuff that you basically iron gauntlet is very good versus anything that you have to block very specific like numbers like they have a lot of on hits you know, like any of the ninjas any of the uh like the rangers basically anything like that iron rock gauntlet is very good against because you need to you need to be able to block four in very specific areas which your deck doesn't do so that helps a lot every basically everything else node if you need extra reach node is really good node basically fixes the numbers for you and should really good and then obviously constellos in hood for the mirror matchup something that i learned going into this is that uh i have tested the ice center mirror versus majin so many times that we are very very good at playing the ice center meter and uh that exceptionally showed when i bodied my round one opponent in our worlds playing the ice center mirror uh that deck that game did not feel close at all uh so let's get into it we are playing the full nine aether ice fans uh sometimes our lists 
are playing only six sometimes we're only we're playing the reds and two yellows not even in the blues but the more and more we tested versus dromite i did feel that we needed just random big arcane spells to kill dragons on their turn so we added the blue aether ice veins and then something thing with keeping the channel like frigid alive aether ice vein yellow is also really good at that so we went through the full nine copies of aether ice vein this time which is really really important for us to get there then you know a basic suite of an attacks so, you know we got the wounded bull you get the fiendles easter and scar for scar here just the average attacks that you always run in a traditional bullender list bullender significantly better than every uh big big arcane spell list unless it's very specifically trying to hit a specific meta but uh bullender is increasingly good versus dromai than anything else then we got some you know mainstays aether hail channel channel like frigid cold snap emeritus frox hex frosting ice bulls three ice Eter uh, eternal three chills three polar blast and then we get to the a little bit of what uh we made our list specifically against so we're looking even more at that draw my matchup and we have three winter scraps sometimes you just draw a quad blue at hand and it's just not good enough to if you it's very tempo oriented the ice center versus draw my matchup and tome really breaks the matchup for them but something that you can to get back into the game or if they run three uh, three themis or other stuff like that winter scraps is really really good at just having a quad blue hand or a hand that you need to come back up maybe you had to uh you play a channel like frigid from arsenal and they come at you with like a dragon that you need to pop you pop with the last card you got two cards in your hand you pitch that ice card come in with winter scraps to kill the dragon and keep the channel alive or just can the winter scraps can't play from arsenal but it is really good in a attack in a pinch and i've also casted winter scraps in mirrors so many times that it is weirdly grown on me as a card as well it's a pretty good card that uh, i think more people should be playing especially uh as long as Icelander and Drollmire are in the same format, I think Winter Scratch is incredibly, incredibly good. The other one I want to talk about is Winter's Bite. Specifically, I don't play Winter's Bite usually in any of the Icelander decks, and this was something that Pankaj was talking about very, very heavily when we were testing for the World Championship, and something that Sasha unique uniquely was saying that was really good against him when we were playing our Dromai Icelander, uh, Icelander games in Barcelona. And Winter Spite really, really grew on me as well. It is not only great against any aggro deck, take, because taking cards from your aggro opponent is just super, super good. Like besides, besides even taking the cards from your um, from your aggro opponent, it is also really good just to have uh, a blue card that also has utility and it will double tax Dromai if you play from Arsenal. Some just like a lot of different niche cases for Winter Spite and when the name of the game is to tax your opponent slow them down and then and incrementally beat them with value off these big attacks and then arcane damage on your opponent opponent's turn winter's bite was just incredible for us and definitely deserved the spot in the list as well and so just some normal balance did decide to go with the three fox ices three chills three ice eternals just in case somebody was trying to play a fatigue uh, game plan and trying to like probably almost auto lose versus Droma and Icelander, but being very good against basically everything else. We had that. You saw that uh, Ethan Douglas's team from Ascent was playing uh, like basically Tree Frog Dash and made top eight. Then he died to an Icelander because if Icelanders, you know, but the Frog Tax is the Ice Eternals and Sidious Jill, they're very, very, very good against fatigue unless you uh unless you fuck up the uh, unless you fuck up the ice internal which uh i won't name the person did on camera at us nats but it is perfectly fine if you just do it like this then we're looking at our our sideboard here first and foremost i will always play e -pot. uh three epots in my ice center list uh it is respect to the mirror and to kano and just also helps you in the game plan if you like you know in a very in a top eight scenario that i know my opponent's playing a fatigue deck epots usually always go in so you can have the higher uh these higher you know frost hex ice eternal combos which are incredibly incredibly good to have uh also just in the mirror you need to set up a decent amount of permanence uh the mirror is pretty pretty tempo based and i like to be on the more uh i'm attacking you side of the mirror but a lot of the games degress if you don't have the attacks line up in the correct situ situations or like the the big you know uh, ice vein setup. 
you do need to set up these e pots you need to set up these frost hexes and city chills to get through that damage for your opponent and then maybe set up an ice eternal or maybe an ice vein into a marriage scolding and these e pots help you do that exceptionally well uh especially with Lubin and Concellos and just uh basically paying for city chills or ice fans in the mirror it's very very good uh three blizzards blizzards are really really good uh, against stromai specifically and just a whole bunch of these aggro decks as well uh i would not put blizzard into dash io specifically because they can just get additional action points it is just giving them a frost point they can pop their boots or they can you know play an item off the top and your blizzard is kind of useless so i wouldn't play against them but basically any other aggro deck in the format i'd play blizzard against because it just sometimes just stops their turn after one attack and it's you know buy you the time that you need to keep going Three sinks below uh, to break those breakpoints versus some aggro decks. A little bit for Bravo. Bravo is a buy, but sink belows make it even better. Just the best defense reaction in the game of sink below, which is really good. As I touched on earlier, we played Red Ice Bolt specifically for Dromai. Uh, was literally incredible, and I will. I was very surprised. I was a Red Ice Bolt hater at the very beginning of me seeing it, uh, and I didn't believe I was trying to maybe go a different direction at our, at our time in testing, and it just grew on me through this, uh, for the last two days before Worlds, and it was incredible the entire weekend for me as well with those Red Ice Bolts. And then to round it off, we got three Command and Conquers. Uh, obviously, you're going to play Command and Conquer for against aggro decks that and usually take out Bowl. Uh, if you need to block because it has the block three and has a lot of disruption versus the aggro decks or you use, use it as a popper versus dromite as well which is really really cool uh i'll say something that uh this is like pretty much somewhat of a usual Islander deck but very specific like uh text questions for worlds i am pretty sad that uh Islander will actually leave the format pretty soon i'm hoping it doesn't go specifically this weekend uh before i can play it in the realm 20k specifically but if i will i probably will play a kano or another spicy deck whatever i think about playing but this is gonna be uh my Islander deck tech it is something that uh, I will play until because it's like what 947. It's gonna be 100% cotton no matter what season comes after that is gonna give CC uh, like LL points for CC. And uh, this is one of the like I I will say that Icelander is one of the most best designed characters ever in Flesh and Blood. And obviously, it's been good since it ever came out. Uh, besides the, the point before Bolander was created, but even when it was just like the arcane kind of combo deck, it was just a very interesting deck. Uh, and basically, that entire format, and then when Michael Hamilton, uh, you know, implored and put attacks into the deck, it was just insane value and something something cool to see and was revolutionary for the hero at this time. And it's been pretty pretty fun playing Ice Center for a very long time. One of the wizards. Uh, and I'll see the actually the last character that has ice talent as well. Just all the ice characters are gone basically because like ice has been one of the best. Uh, Channel like frigid at instant speed is obviously a hell of a card, and they've even banned cards from this lit from Icelander, and it's still one of the top decks in uh, in the format and will continue to be. Fortunately, Icelander is not that good in, in LL because of Prism specifically, and also your Starbo matchup is not that good. So. Uh, we'll have to see if in LL she'll get any tools or anything in the future to help her in that format. But that's going to be my deck tech, uh, what I brought for the World Championship. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I will definitely see you guys in the next one. See ya.